Cheers. Today, I wanted to show you the open source pixel program named Graphics2. Graphics2 is inspired by the legendary uh, pixel programs, Brilliance and Deluxe Paint that we all know and love from the Amiga. It is available on a wide range of operating system, Linux, AmigaOS, MorphOS, MacOS, and even Windows, if you for some reason prefer using that. Personally, I think it would be most fun to showcase it on AmigaOS 4, but keep in mind it looks and behaves identically on all other platforms. But let's start with installing it and take it from there. To install uh, graphics to in Amiga OS 4, we need to visit uh, OS 4 Depot and search for graphics to and download. And I'll just save it to RAM. And I want to unarchive it to my system utilities drawer, and I will make a graphics to drawer in there. Like this, no errors. And let's close all this down. And now graphics should be available in here. And it is. Let's see if it's working. And it is. I want to add it to my dock. So I'll just add object. Workbench. Utilities. Graphics 2. Graphics 2. Okay. Like that. And now I have it on my dock. Now let's quick have a look at what you can do with it and how. Graphics supports layer. One way of using it is if you make a background like this and plan to make something on top of it. So if we quickly make uh, a background, just fill it with the uh, blue like the sky and add some skies we can then add a layer on top of it and on this layer we can paint a bird like this now this bird doesn't affect the underlying layer layer just like on uh, Photoshop or any other modern uh, graphic utility. So if we can copy this and make some more birds. And in a Pixlr this would be quite a lot of work to fix. But since this support layers, we can just delete the layer and everything is back to the way it was. As you can see, if I use the left button, I can choose the tools like this. But all, most of the tools in Graphics 2 also have a right button menu. So if I press that, I can change uh, into another mode for that tool. If we first paint in continuous mode, you can see every pixel is uh, connected to the next one. Like this, the normal way of pixel. But if we change into another one, discontinuous, you can see if I change the speed of the mouse cursor, it changed how close together the pixels are. And this is the way most of the tools uh, are made. You have a right menu to choose a different way to use the tool. The flood fill also has uh, one of these uh, cool functions on the right menu. And uh, if we press the left one and use the default, it's just like any other pixel. We can choose a color 
and we can uh, fill one of the areas like this. But if we use the right button to change the way it behaves like this, we can now choose a color and replace all places in the image that has this color. As most pixelers, graphics do also have uh, support for paint brushes. And as you can see, it has quite a variety of uh, paint brushes to choose from. One of the neat things about uh, graphics is uh, if you choose one like this, and uh, as you can see, you now have a one pixel brush like this. But in graphics too, you can use the period and the comma to make the brush bigger like this with the period. And if we change into comma, we can make it smaller. That's very handy for a pixeler. One uh, function I really like and use a lot. If you need to make your own brushes, you first need to fill the background like this. And then we use this tool, the brush grab. And we pick a part of the image like this, and we can use that as a brush. And if we pray the X like this, or the Y, we can turn it around and use them as a brush. Uh, that's very useful. Let's say if you paint one eye and want to cheat and uh, reuse it, you can use it again. If you press the W like I did here, you can rotate it any way you like. That's uh, quite unique for graphics, I think, at least for the old school pixelers like this. Another cool thing in uh, graphics too is the effects uh, thing. If we use sieve, you can uh, think of it like a kind of dithering. It is very handy, let's say, if you want to do some shading. So let's give you an example. Let's make a big brush like this. You see, uh, now make a kind of darker uh, pink. To give a better example, let's uh, make a gray area. And then next to it, we make a darker gray area. And if we want to do some shading in between them, we use this function, or effects as it's called in uh, graphics too. And if you see, if we now do this, it makes a shading effect. So you kind of get uh, a free color there. There is, of course, the normal stuff that all pixelers have, like spray can, which you can use like this. Just a normal spray can function, just like personal paint and anything else. And you can use uh, this to make, uh, what's it called? A polyfill, but if we choose the other one, we can make one that is filled with the color like this. So most tools, as I said earlier, have two modes like this or like this. So use some time to get to know the interface when you start using graphics too, because it's very, very powerful. One of the more powerful pixelers I know. This being a pixeler, it's very important uh, that you are able to set up the palette. So if you use this arrow, you can uh, go through the palette. And the current palette has a lot of colors. If you press the PAL button, you can set up graphics to, to use uh, less colors. Usually you don't want that many colors when you are making graphics. So if you set up a 16 color palette like this, and uh, to make it easy for ourselves, we can maybe set this uh, color to blue and then use the spread uh, function. And then we have a gradient between uh, black and blue like this. A quick and handy way to set up a good palette. Setting the bit 
depth of a palette is extremely important when making uh, graphics for older systems and the uh, graphics 2 has great support for that in the palettes menu if you press the right button you enter this menu and here you can use the rgb scale to set uh, how many colors your palette can choose between we can have it like this 64 bit and that's VGA, or we can lower it to 16, which is uh, the classic Amiga, or we can lower it to 8, which is the Atari ST. This is very important when making old school graphics. And if I press OK, you now see that there is not that many uh, steps on our gradient palette. So you have a lot less colors to choose between on older computers. This is one of the most important reasons I use graphics too. And I think this is about everything I wanted to show you. The rest of it is more things you find if you need them. This should be enough to get you going. It is, however, important to say that graphics also support animation. And uh, I, I have never used this much, but uh, I can give you a quick demonstration. So if we use a brush like this and make a new frame and then paint another like this and add a new frame and a new frame like this and if we now uh, go through the through them you see we now have an animation so there is uh, functionality to make uh, animations in graphics too it's uh, important to know that it's possible just like in deluxe paint now that we have installed and looked at the functions i wanted to do this uh, almost mandatory part that we do in this videos where we play some nice music and i use the program and, and try to make some pixel art with it so i wanted to finish this picture that i'm i have already started but it's important to have some uh, proper music to go so let's turn on some music and start pixeling
I think that's it for today. And I've showed you a bit of what Graphx2 can do, and it's a very powerful pixeler, and especially if you're doing graphics for older hardware. And I highly recommend it. I hope I've inspired you to give it a try yourself, and I would love to give you a final cheers, but I'm out of beer. But I do wish you a wonderful weekend.